Hello, Modrim here. As a matter of fact, I wanted to showcase this build in Torment difficulty with a few dungeons I have been doing. Now for the now for the gameplay, I will not comment anything, I will just show you the gameplay. For the bosses, I will be showing you three, and for the dungeons, I will be showing you some of them. I am not entirely sure which one I pick. So I hope you can enjoy this, and if you want to see the updates on the build, I will have them at the end. ready yet. Not ready yet.
Wait a moment. I'm out of spirit. So next I want to go over the changes to the build and what I improved. So first the abilities. The first thing you will notice is we do not have blood hole anymore. I picked up debilitating raw. I also picked up cyclone armor instead of the ultimate. This has two reasons. The first one is the ultimate has a lengthy cooldown and we need something that's immediate and available to us during normal gameplay. So. Cyclone Armor provides us with a strong wind surrounding us and decreases the damage we take from non-physical damage. We have a legendary power that also applies this to physical damage. So basically 10% less damage taken from every source. We also get innate Cyclone Armor because of the vulnerability on hit. So whenever we use this ability near an enemy, for example a boss or a lead, they get the application of vulnerable and they get bursted by us. And debilitating raw is for the damage reduction Whenever we are surrounded by enemies and need to charge up our lightning storm or just need to get out or burst down our targets, you can use this ability. It has no it has no cast time, so it's immediate. And four seconds, basically you're immune to damage. We also get enhanced debilitating raw for fortify. The other options here are not that great, so we do not pick those. I dropped the gate because the 9% movement speed are not worth it at this point. I have 25% on my boots, I have 25% through the unstoppable buff, through Urban Bulwark and the legendary power, Ghostwalker, and we also have 25% on our amulet. And there are multiple sources of movement increases through either kills on elite, or using a potion, or evading. We don't need the 9% anymore. Next question that also came up quite often, why do we have 5 points in landslide? Because when we trample, this one benefits from this damage. It does not benefit from the enchantments right here, because those do not proc. Either it's bugged or intended, but it doesn't work on this. Otherwise we cleaned up the bottom section here, picked up one point in natural disaster, and that's about it. Everything else stayed the same. Next the paragon board. I switched around a few things to make leveling a bit easier. We need immediate power once we get to torment. So my build previously didn't work with just pathing to the glyph slots and waiting for endgame. Doesn't work this way. So what I needed to pick is 25 dexterity to get the glyph slot activated here to get the added bonus. This one is the crit glyph, that spirit. It increases our critical strike damage with core skills and it provides us with a multiplier on critical strikes. And for the second glyph, we picked up exploit, we slot this one in, 25 dexterity is available to us, we get vulnerable damage from this one, so this one is a multiplier to our damage, and we get 3 seconds of vulnerable on every target we hit. This one has a 20 second cooldown, but it's immediate, so we can burst down everything before this one falls off, and if it doesn't, we can use our cyclone armor or just lucky hits, because we have lucky hits in the skill tree, down here, elemental exposure. It is a low chance, only around 1%, but it is here for us to enjoy. Anyway, back to the Paragon bot. We still have Ancestral Guidance. We pick this one up very early and we path to Thunderstruck because 30% more critical strike damage versus vulnerable and immobilized targets allows us to burst on our enemies without much trouble. We also pick up this node cluster here for critical strike damage and vulnerable damage, and this note here is absolutely insane, with vulnerable damage 10 and 15% critical strike damage. We then path to this node with a little bit of critical strike damage, and all those nodes around it also provide us with critical strike damage. So basically, all our damage comes through the Paragon board, and most of our defenses come through our gear. You can find this tree down in the description box, it's labeled with 75 plus 24, because we get 20 points through the Renon, I finished up all zones, and you get 4 Paragon points through Shrines. So we also get those, so you have 124 available to you at 75. We are a little bit further than this, so our tree looks a little bit different, but you will be, 
but everything else will be available to you. Now the level 103 looks exactly the same like the lightning slide one. Next, a few changes to our gear. First, you will notice we don't have ruby sockets. We have the sapphire ones with 2.5 damage reduction while fortified. We are always fortified, so that's basically 12.5%. Another mod I really like is the life on kill because it's immediate sustain. It doesn't leech, it applies directly to our health pool. So when there is a lot of small spiders, we can just nuke them and heal back up. That's very nice to have versus poison or dot effects because of a potion is heal over time, so we do not heal immediately and we can die. With this one, we practically don't. The total armor bonus here is very nice to have because armor scales extremely well into the early end game and otherwise grab as much damage reduction as possible. We have close enemies, distant enemies, while fortified and flat damage reduction. Grab as much as possible on all your gear pieces because torment is slapping you around left, right, backhand, front end, whatever you will die if you do not have enough damage reduction. And one more change for the spirit boon, we pick up overlord instead of calm before the storm because we don't need obsidian slam, we don't need masochistic, we cannot use this, and we don't have an ultimate anymore, so basically the only option available to us is overlord. Everything else stayed the same. Like I said, you will find everything down in the description box at tree specifically for 75, and the end tree also modified for this type of build because we do not take blood hole anymore. We do not take an ultimate anymore. We have complete different spells, but the base feeling of this build still works. Anyway, I hope that cleared up a lot of things. And as you can see, this build is totally viable in torment difficulty. It plays really well. It feels really well. It moves out everything I didn't like about the druid. It is speedy. It is fast. It is punchy. A very strong build overall. The strongest? I feel like yes, because you can target enemies across walls, behind walls, and nuke everything before they see you, before they can hit you. It is very mobile, it has a lot of CC, it has a lot of defensive tools, so I'm very certain this build is the strongest currently available. Anyway, if you liked this video, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. It helps me quite a lot to push against all those other videos. And especially I want to promote this type of druid, because everyone is playing Pulverize and it's tiring to see. So there's no innovation. So see you next time and bye.